Hi guys and welcome to tonight's video. I say tonight because it is so it is Thursday, which if you're new here and you don't know, Thursday is one of my clinical days. I just got home from a 12 hour shift. I'm home now and I wanted to film a video for you guys that's kind of like a night routine before an exam. Kind of just what I do the night before an exam to prep, to kind of de-stress, to get ready for it and all that stuff. I will say I'm very nervous for this exam. If you follow me on Instagram, I just made a post. I'll actually, instead of pulling it up on my phone, I'll put it up right here. If you want to go check it out, you can. I just talked about like exam nerves and anxiety and all that stuff. I was in the thick of it last night. So if you're there, I feel you. I understand. I'm with you. I support you. I hear your concerns. I know what you're going through. And I just want you to know you're not alone. If, if you need someone to talk to, you can always reach out to me on Instagram or you through YouTube or whatever. But I wanted to come on and talk to you guys about kind of just what I do before an exam. So tonight, like I said, I'm a little bit more stressed out for this exam than normal. So this routine might be a little bit different. I ran to the grocery store and I picked up sushi. Normally on the night before an exam, I like don't cook. Connor's pretty awesome about cooking. But tonight he's on shift. Um, if you don't know who Connor did, Connor is. That is my husband. He's a firefighter and he works 48 hour shifts, which means he's gone for two days in a row. When he's gone, I really don't like cooking much because it's weird for me to make a meal for one person. I just don't eat that much. And so it just seems silly to like cook a bunch of food and I just don't like doing it. So usually I'll either eat leftovers, random snacks that are in the fridge, or I'll go to the grocery store and pick something up. I grabbed some sushi, so I'm gonna go ahead and eat because I'm hungry. We've got the sushi. Got some tea, uh, but let me get my notes. What the frick happened to the lighting on my camera? That was super weird. So this exam is on all the different kinds of shock, which there are one, two, three, four. So six types of shock, SIRS and MODS, which SIRS is systemic inflammatory response syndrome, and MODS is multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. And SIRS is basically just like an inflammatory response. And then MODS is when two or more organs start to fail in the body. And like basically you can't recover from that. Or if you do, I think it's pretty slim that you do. Once those organs start failing, you die basically. And then we're also being tested on um, a bunch of different type of heart dysrhythmias. So like VTAC, ventricular tachycardia, um, V-fib, ventricular fibrillation, if you don't know what VTAC and V-fib are. A-fib, which is just atrial fibrillation, first degree heart block, third degree heart block, SVT, PSVT, PVCs, you have asystole, which is like flatlining, so if you ever hear like medical shows talking about flatlining, that's what asystole is. Um, defibrillation and cardioversion, so those are two different types of therapies you can do, so defibrillation is like when you shock a patient, like with an AED after doing CPR. Cardioversion is actually attempting, attempting to put them back into another rhythm. If you're not in nursing school, if you haven't learned this stuff yet, it's probably super confusing. Don't be afraid based on everything I just said. Don't let that scare you. I'm in my last med surge rotation. I'm in the last of nursing school. This is critical care. These are ICU patients. These are really, really sick people. So don't let this scare you. You don't just like learn this information first. You learn it at the end. So don't let it scare you. It is a lot. It's not stuff you're expected to know in the beginning. So don't let any of the things I just said scare you, but that's everything that's on my test. So I have this sheet which I have all the different types of shock going down. So I have cardiogenic, hypovolemic, septic, neurogenic, obstructive, and then anaphylactic is like down here and really small. But I know anaphylactic because we've been learning about that one since way back in the beginning because that's the response you get to like allergies, like when you're allergic to a food like fish or something. So I have it really small down here in green just because I know it pretty well. The rest of these are pretty new. I have the types of shock here. This is really hard to see. And then going across, I have the physiologic effect, things that cause it, the medications that we're gonna give, and the goal of the treatment that we're doing. And on the back, I have just some extra notes. And then I have this one that's filled out also. There's just a couple on the front. Those are some dysrhythmias. And then a bunch on this second page. And this is just like the type of dysrhythmia and then all the info I need to know about each one. I just wrote like some extra notes and stuff. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a blank one of these sheets, which is my sheet all about shock. I'm gonna take a blank packet of this, which is all about dysrhythmias. I'm gonna do my best to fill them in without looking at these. And then we'll go back and compare what I didn't fill in and like add stuff that I didn't and kind of go from there, it kind of gives me a gauge of what all I need to keep studying. So I'm gonna work on that right now, try and fill in the blanks, 
literally and then um, I'll let you know where we're going from there okay guys so I went ahead and filled in this whole sheet I just wrote the shocks down the side I wrote some stuff about like general shock here just because some of the symptoms are the same and then I went through and filled in what I know I know that I didn't get everything I know that I'm missing some stuff so now I'm gonna go and compare so we'll just kind of see and then I'm gonna fill in anything that was missing also just a tidbit when I started this I had the TV on and I realized I was getting distracted so I paused it it's still on but it is paused I really think having peace and quiet while you're studying or at least really trying to focus really makes a difference and I know that some people need background noise but I swear like since I started going with silence it's made a huge difference and I really am a lot more focused I'm gonna go through and fill in the blanks and things that I missed and then we'll kind of see where I'm at and I'll update you from there hi guys so I went through and I added everything that I missed in purple pen a lot of them were just like small stupid details and then I went through and basically did it again um, the same thing that I did here just on a normal piece of paper so I wrote out like cardiogenic shock cause symptoms treatment goals and for the next one hypovolemic shock cause symptoms treatment goals septic cause symptoms treatment I didn't do goals for that one neuro and obstructive and then I went through anything that I forgot I wrote in like in there their color so I forgot two meds and just like the dosage for this med for sepsis um for hypovolemic I didn't really forget anything just that you want to give normal saline first before LR so now that I did those I feel pretty good about those so I think I'm going to move on to um the dysrhythmias and just do the exact same thing with the dysrhythmias I'm going to take the blank sheet that I have and fill it in as much as I can and then we'll kind of go from there just like I have been with this one but I think this is a great way to review information it works really well for me just because it really tests what you do or don't know because you're filling in a blank piece of paper keep you updated Hi guys, I'm back with an update. It's 9 45. I have a huge mess right here So this is like the blank version and I filled out what I knew but I wrote it in pencil just in case I wanted to reuse this sheet um, just because I don't have multiple copies and I have my computer out because I went through and I listened to our lecture Just to make sure I wasn't missing any information because I feel pretty confident about the shock stuff I feel less confident about the dysrhythmia stuff, so I wanted to listen to the lecture to make sure that I wasn't missing anything. So that is a study tip that I've talked about before. If your school doesn't record your lectures automatically for you, like mine does, they just record them and post them to our school website for us to go back and listen to and watch. If your school doesn't do that, and you can, I recommend recording them, buying like a recording device. You could record them on your phone. For you, I totally recommend it. It's super helpful for me to just go back in and make sure I didn't miss any extra things that she's talked about in class. I refilled out that form. I like erased everything and rewrote it again in pencil. And then, oh no, I just dumped out my entire pencil bag on accident. See that? A whole bunch probably just fell on the ground. I'm gonna show you the little document I made. I made this document and I color coded it all. So I have cardiogenic shock, I wrote the cause, signs and symptoms treatment and goals hypovolemic shock septic shock I did it the same for all of them and then neurogenic shock obstructive shock and then I could do anaphylactic down here but like I said I'm not really worried about that because I know that one pretty well and then I did it for all of our um, dysrhythmia so first degree block third degree uh, PVCs VTAC VFib um, asystole which is just flat line defibrillation and cardioversion are like two of the treatment so I wrote all those out and I'm kind of tired of writing but I wrote all those out so that in the morning I can quickly like fill them in as one last like way to study it really helps me to just rewrite things over and over again and if you notice I put things in different colors the reason that I do that is color coding really 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 helps me if you don't color code I totally recommend it like first degree block I'll do in blue um, everything about that I'll probably write with like a back a black pen and then if there's any like tiny parts that are really important I'll write those in blue that match same for all of these I'll just go down and write in black and then the corresponding color the other day when I was studying I was thinking about obstructive shock and in my head I could see it written in pink there's something in your brain that makes them link together I think I could be totally wrong I don't know but I do it all the time it's so helpful so if you haven't tried that trick I might definitely try it um, I think I'm gonna call it quits for now with my mess of papers it's 9 49 p.m. I'm gonna leave this blank this little form that I made with all these color code topics on it and in the morning I'm gonna wake up and fill it in and I'm gonna head to bed and review some practice questions so
Okay guys, so as you can see, I picked up my living room a little bit. My couch was a disaster with all the papers. Um, my island had a bunch of like note cards and papers and stuff on it, so I tried to pick up a lot of that. Those are the papers I'm gonna be taking to my room with me because I have some practice questions on them. One thing that I like to do the night before exams is pick up the apartment. I know that that seems kind of weird. I don't go too crazy, it's not like I deep clean, but I do really like after like a stressful day and exam, especially if the exam doesn't go well, which hopefully tomorrow will go well. I'll definitely update you guys in the end of this vlog. But especially if it doesn't go well, it just feels really nice to come home to a space that's like clean and a place that I can like decompress and relax. And like my apartment is somewhere that is like very cozy and comfortable and just a space that I feel really at peace in. And so having a space that's like clean and just like I can come home and like decompress whether I'm happy or sad it makes me feel better so I like to pick things up before bed and another thing I like to do is prep my coffee so I'm gonna finish getting the kitchen picked up and I'm gonna make some coffee for the morning okay guys so I prepped my coffee and now we are gonna get ready for bed so I'm just putting my hair up so it's out of my way I'm just gonna take off my makeup so I get a lot of questions about my skincare routine and I felt like this might be an appropriate time to talk about this I really suck at taking care of my skin I've really been lucky I've never had acne I occasionally will get like a pimple or two or like a breakout I don't have the best skincare routine so I appreciate you guys asking because I guess that means I have good skin, but I'm literally the worst at taking care of it. So maybe listen to me if you're like me, maybe don't. I don't know, but you guys asked to see how I take care of my skin, so I'm gonna show you. First thing I use is Meissler water. This is just Meissler cleansing water by Garnier Skin Care. And I just shake it up. I just use these little like cotton pads and I literally just like rub it everywhere to take my makeup off. I don't really wear makeup that often, but I still will do this as often as I remember. I don't wash my face every day because Literally, sometimes I'm just forgetful. Even if I don't have makeup on, I'll try to do this just because I feel like you still have like dirt in on your face, even if it's not makeup. So that's all done. Now I'm gonna go in with this product. This is the Clinique um, number two. It's like clarifying lotion. It's basically like a toner. And again, I just shake it up. I put on one of these pads and I wipe it all over my face. I really like it, especially in the winter. I feel like it helps get off like any dry patches that I have, which is what I tend to struggle with. And then I'll put moisturizer on, which is from Tula. This is just their like oil-free gel. I'll put this on and then my skincare routine is done. I know it's short and probably nothing exciting, but that's it. Okay guys, so another thing that I do the night before an exam is lay out my clothes. Probably seems super silly because it's something that takes like five minutes to do in the morning, but sometimes I'm awful about picking out clothes and I'm sure if you're a girl, you've been this way too, but I'll literally try on like 20 things and hate all of them. And it really helps me to just lay things out because I don't have to think about it. I just put it on. Okay, so I'm doing these questions. I might catch up with you before I go to bed. Otherwise, I will see you right now. Leave my desk.